This video is sponsored by Instant Gaming. More on how you could save money on games later in the video. Borderlands 2 is full of Easter eggs and references, but the most memorable one for me has to be the Minecraft Easter egg in Caustic Caverns. So today, we're gonna ask ourselves, can you beat Borderlands 2 with only the longbow? Here are the rules for this run. First off, this will be an Ultimate Vault Hunter mode Overpower 10 playthrough. For the Minecraft players that have never played this game, this just means enemies have 4 times health, health regen, and are all 10 levels higher than us. Bar will not be allowed for this run, and the longbow is the only gun I can use. The longbow being a sniper type weapon means that Zero is the character to pick for this run. To complement his skills, we will be using the Legendary Sniper class mod for a bunch of sniper buffs. This class mod also has us trade off two thirds of our shield for some pretty intense crit damage bonuses, so we will be super squishy for the whole run. Melee attacks in Zero's kunai will be allowed for applying death mark and slag to the bad guys, but I can't kill enemies with the melee damage. If any of the run invalid babies want to complain about this, I literally put it in the rules, so don't make a fool of yourself. As for the other gear, we have a basic shield and the Vault Hunter Relic as a placeholder. Here's a quick peek at the build. Pretty basic sniper build stuff, so let's hop into the run. We start our journey in Tutorial Town, a village recently overrun by pillagers and their fearsome ravagers. And just like any Minecraft raid, I used my bow to start taking these guys out from afar. Lucky for us, every single longbow you find in this game comes with a flame enchantment, making combat with these fleshy bandits and creatures relatively easy. I used my time here to learn the arc of the arrow shot so I could hit crits more efficiently. The longbow being one of three snipers in the game with no scope and also shooting Minecraft arrows at an upward angle made it a little goofy to aim. The 10 out of 5 in velocity tripling our bullet speed also made this pretty chaotic to learn. I found we were really accurate when we used the top of our crosshair to aim instead of the middle. Anyway, we met with the town's only surviving villager. He helped us fix up our iron golem friend and we made our way towards the first boss fight, Boom Boom. Here we learned a pretty valuable lesson for this run. No crits, no damage. This sniper is definitely a skill cannon, especially when it comes to armored fire resistant enemies like Boom Boom. Even on basic enemies, body shots won't get you very far, but if you set it up and land the headshots, you get the results you need. Oh god, that hurts, that hurts, that hurts, that hurts. After we dealt with those guys, we fought our way up to Flint, and I actually took my time here because I somehow survived this long while being super squishy this whole time. In most of my runs, I'm around 20 deaths at this point, so I was super focused. We made it to Flint and totally expected that this run could end here. Flint being a fire resistant boss that has a phase where fire damage heals him was one thing, but also giving him a mass that blocks most of your crits made this fight pretty dumb. Before this run, I was under the assumption that you just couldn't kill Flint with fire weapons. Like, look at this clip of me spamming him with a fire north fleet. That's not a great sign, eh? I knew this fight could be a roadblock before I even started the run. So I came up with a strat so cheesy, so goofy, and so impractical that I really didn't want to use it if I didn't have to. I'll be calling this strat Plan B. Plan A was to knock Flint out of his arena and bug out his AI, and then we would just feed him crits and hope that we could fight against his health regeneration. And at first, it looked like my arrows weren't doing anything. But Zero had a trick up his sleeve. I'm talking about Critical Ascension. This skill gives Zero more crit and sniper damage for every crit he hits. These stacks of Critical Ascension will start decaying if you stop getting crits after a short period of time or swap to a non-sniper weapon. So now the question was, could I stack enough Critical Ascension to actually move his health bar? Slag, please. Please slag. Oh? Oh, what the f Oh, that was a grenade. We're good. No way. We have enough ammo, dude. We don't need slag. We don't even need slag. Oh my god. Well, I could be wrong, but I think I might be the first person ever to kill Flint with a fire weapon at OP10. I was honestly really glad that that worked out. 
Looks like we're gonna have to save plan B for another run. Anyway, we got Claptrap's belt back, made it to three horns, used my bully mong whispering skills, stole a car, made it villager color, uh -huh. hit door guy, changed my mind about the vehicle color, met Corporal Reese, sniped the crap out of a guy that stole his battery, made a snow golem to avenge the 20 bandits for Reese, and finally made it to Sanctuary. Alright, so we're gonna be waiting for Private Jessup to open this door for a while, so now is a great time to tell you about how instant gaming can save you money on your next video game purchase. Picture this, all your homies get a new game and you see them over there having a blast, so you decide to get the game for yourself, but uh oh, it's going to set you back 70 bucks? Yikes! Yeah, video games are getting expensive nowadays, but that's where Instant Gaming comes in. They have deals on tons of games, and I'm willing to bet they've got deals on some of the games that have been rotting away in your wish lists. And the best part for me personally is that there's no waiting for deals here. That's why they call it Instant Gaming. And to the console homies watching, Instant Gaming has you guys covered too. So if you're on PlayStation, Xbox, or even Switch, they've got deals with your name on them. So how about this? You think of a game you've been wanting to play and use my link in the description to at least see what kind of deal they're offering on it. And just know if you do end up making a purchase, not only are you saving yourself money, but you're also supporting the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the run. What are we still doing here? Anyway, the Firehawk left us a pretty frightening message, so we set off to Frostburn Canyon. I usually run right through this place because all the mandatory combat is at the very end, but my haste got the best of me. I got greedy and died to a couple of fire-resistant nomads halfway through and took this run's first death. My first life in a run is usually the best, so this number is just going to start increasing fast now. Anyway, we made it to Lilith and died a couple more times. And honestly, I'm blaming Lilith for this one. For the Minecraft players, imagine Lilith as an annoying Enderman that is supposed to help you fight, but in reality just blinds you most of the time when it teleports, and you also have to constantly feed its drug habits. Oh yeah, and it also has a really dumb catchphrase. Anyway, some big boy Vindicators showed up, and I proved that they are killable with the longbow before dealing with the others in my signature style. Rebozo. Whoa. I put the stinky on him. After all that was dealt with, our next goal was to go save our boy Roland. He was captured and being held in the Bloodshot Woodland Mansion, and we were going to need a new car to sneak in. Now usually this is the part of the run where I get a break from the harsh, cruel combat and get to fight some cars that aren't balanced properly for endgame and feel like a god for two minutes. But like I said before, no crits, no damage. Even with Boar, fighting the cards was actually pretty scary stuff. This just goes to show how important hitting crits was during this run. After stealing enough parts to make ourselves a new minecart, we made it back to the Bloodshot Mansion and took on Bad Ma. This fight was a bit rough. Homie had a shield and it was making it really hard to hit the crits we needed. It was sloppy, but we took him out and made our way inside. So we start fighting through all the mobs and things were going great, right up until the dreaded toilet room. Yeah, these bone crushers, they were turning me into bone meal. Anytime a bullet hit me, it would just break my shield and just take a chunk of my health in the process. Like, imagine getting shot, but all you have to block the bullet is a piece of cardboard. It's not gonna do much, but you're getting shot, so you're gonna take what you can get. The bad guys also had the high ground here. I wish I had some ender pearls to gain some hide advantage, but all I had were these invisibility potions that only last 5 seconds. After a few deaths, I changed up my strategy a bit. I decided to leave some of the psychos alive and just keep them close by. This way, when I ended up getting shot twice, I had a totem of undying ready to get me back into the action. We eventually took out enough bad guys for the door to open and Mad Mike showed up. I don't know why, but he just decided to jump into the end portal without placing a bed first. Uh, guess I wish him luck on fighting the ender- oh, okay, that's unfortunate. Oh well. We found Roland and he was in big trouble. Homie set off a skulk sensor in the ward and came and nabbed him up. We had to be quick here because if we didn't kill the warden in time, he would take Roland to the friendship gulag where the fight is a lot harder. On the run up to him, we fought our first loaders and honestly, that didn't go too well. These yellow health bar armored enemies are fire resistant and we end up doing about a quarter of the damage that we should be doing. So if fighting these basic armored enemies is rough, how is a giant armored enemy that spawns more armored enemies going to go? Well, extremely well considering that he has a giant crit spot and doesn't move at all. Yeah, I was able to get a good amount of critical ascension stacks using this Rainbow Six Siege type angle, and I managed to take out the Warden before it could even spawn any bad guys. Anyway, we fought off the rest of the loaders with Roland and made it back to Sanctuary. Our next mission was to blow up a train and steal the belt key. For the first time in a while, we were able to light the three Varkids on fire without needing a fire melon. 
And after that, Mardo and Tina helped us make some TNT to blow up that train, but not before it could take another victim. Okay, maybe a couple victims. Anyway, we started our fight with Wilhelm and this fight was pretty rough. Between him spawning loaders and surveyors with no crit spots, he himself also hits pretty hard, so I had to initiate the gamer posture for this fight. Step one was to get the loaders dealt with. This would give me less to worry about and also help me build up some critical ascension stacks for Wilhelm himself. And after that, I would just target Wilhelm and try to fight against his shield being recharged. I tried to leave the surveyors alive in case I needed a second wind, but that wasn't a guarantee. No crits, no damage, so if I was going to kill one of these, I was going to have to hope they would line themselves up for a boar shot. For the Minecraft players, think of boar as the piercing enchantment, but the bullet doubles its damage every time it hits something. This skill can one-shot some enemies if their hurt boxes are overlapping because the damage just keeps stacking, so that was something we prayed for during the fight. This was actually a pretty close fight. I was running out of ammo towards the end of it. Gosh darn it, dude. I knew mending wasn't worth it. But we had plenty of critical ascension stacks, so we had just enough ammo to finish this fight. Anyway, we stole another battery for the city's shield system, but turns out it had a virus planted in it, and now Herobrine is hidden somewhere in Borderlands 2. Uh, I guess please leave a comment if you end up seeing him in the video. Uh, I'm kind of scared right now. Yeah, so Sanctuary turned into a giant end island and then disappeared. I forgot to place a bed up there, so now we need a new way to get home. I found a route through the fridge where all my other skeleton brethren live. Us bone boys need to stick together, so they didn't do me any harm as I passed through. We made it to the outwash and found the beacon we needed to get back to Sanctuary. Only issue was an angry glow squid ate it, so we were going to have to kill that thing. Our first attempt went pretty bad, and I thought this fight was going to be tough. But then I came back, beamed it in the eyeballs, and killed it in like 5 seconds. Now that we had our beacon, all we needed to do was set it up and defend it. I didn't have 164 iron blocks to get any stat boost, so when Jack moonshot 50 loaders at me, I was pretty much beat right there. After struggling my way through another 15 deaths, we were finally able to make it back home. Our next mission was to prep for the big bunker raid, and step one of that was getting Claptrap's upgrade from the preserve. We started trying to wound the loaders to get the front door open. Uh, emphasis on trying. Like, we could wound the loaders, but by the time we wounded the next one, they would just heal and not be classified as wounded anymore. Lucky for us, this game is spaghetti coated, and if you end up dying while one of the loaders is still wounded, the game doesn't realize that they heal back to full health, and they still count towards the three wounded loader requirement. So after a few tactical respawns, we made it deeper into the preserve and started fighting Pomona and Tumba. I didn't really need to fight these guys, but I just kind of felt like it. That was until I actually started trying to hit Pomone's crit spot and instantly regretted it. Those guys died eventually and I continued on. The first mandatory mobbing section here was, uh, well, it was fine until the stalkers started throwing the loaders around, making it really hard to hit crits. Oh my god, dude, this goofy off fight, dude! We started prioritizing the stalkers to avoid this issue, and the Uba eventually showed up. This thing is big and slow, so hitting crits on it was pretty easy. Uh, Right up until both of his arms fell off and no longer had any crit spots. Honestly not sure why his eyeball is in a crit spot just like literally every other loader, ever. But at least these guys are one of the few enemies that don't have health regen. So we just had to be patient. But this still took a long time. Long enough that the loaders we previously killed hit their 25 minute respawn timer right as we were running out of ammo, so that was a bit scary. We managed to clutch up though and made our way to the loot dudes. Much like the baby zombies in Minecraft, you want to fight these guys one at a time because having four of them on you would be pretty bad. I think our gear had looting on it because this time around we got three legendaries. A Logan's gun, a Shred of Fire, and a Maggie. Pretty good haul. Which reminds me, if you want any of this cool loot or to try this challenge for yourself, I have the save file on my Discord server. Link in the description if you want to join. After that, it was pretty much a straight shot to Bloodwing. Uh, uh oh. Wolves, my sworn enemy. Anyway, after losing a few ribs, we made it to Bloodwing. So this fight had the potential to be pretty tough, because it's a three-phase fight where she goes through fire, shock, and corrosive phases. During my last run where I was tied to a gun lock to one element, this fight took a long time because that last corrosive phase had so much damage reduction. Lucky for us in this fight, we take on the fire phase first, so all the pressure isn't built up to the last phase. We could die during this fight and it wouldn't be a big deal since the first phase is the only one to worry about. But honestly, we're getting ahead of ourselves and worrying too much. This gun killed Flint, and I've fought the Ender Dragon before. So you think some spicy bird can stop us? No, no, stop, stop. 
Please kill it. Please kill it. Thank you. Alright guys, Bloodwing is starting to get bodied. I've got a feeling she won't back down easily though. Anyway, after stacking a bunch of Critical Ascension off of Bloodwing, we grabbed the Claptrap upgrade and made it back home. The next thing we needed for the bunker raid was Brick's air support, so we made our way to Thousand Cuts. And yeah, at this point the game just started falling apart. I think I tried to do that when I died. No. Anyway, we made it to Brick's initiation and decided to make all the Goliaths mad. We eventually got one to go full Godliath and we had to take him on. But for some reason, I just couldn't hit any crits on this guy. Sure, his head flails around a lot and that makes it harder to hit, but with the amount of rounds I shot in that general vicinity, I should have at least hit a few. I ended up dying and just summed it up as an anomaly, because as soon as I got back, I just bodied him, so I guess that's kind of funny. After that, we put the stinky on Sarcastic Slab, put the stinky on a loader, Brick put the stinky on a loader, and then Brick and I used the power of friendship to put the stinky on a loader together. Oh, set me up. Set me up. We now had Brick's air support backing us up, so all that was left was to go assassinate the Jack Double and steal his voice. We caught the Faker by surprise and filled his face with arrows before he had a chance to run away. We stole his watch and pressed a few buttons and made our way out of there. With all the tools we needed, we made our way up to the bunker. Claptrap snuck us in, and our first door was guarded by this toaster right here. Usually we just use our constructor displacement strat to get him to look at this wall so all of his missiles just hit the door, but this time we tricked it into looking the other way. That way we could hit its crit spot from over here and take it out efficiently. Our next target wouldn't be this easy though. Long time viewers know about the issues with these baby turrets. These guys are fire resistant, don't have crit spots, and are fueled by regeneration 2 potions. And uh, am I forgetting something? Oh yeah, they're just straight up immune to splash damage because of a glitch. The longbow doesn't deal splash damage, so that's not the problem. The issue comes from our kunai not being able to slag these turrets so that they would take triple damage. The kunai still apply death mark, but that wears off quickly and is only an 80% damage boost. So in order to kill these things, we needed to use some type of slag grenade to make these guys purple. Or do we? Right before I went to go find a slag grenade, I had an idea that might make this fight doable. Right before you get to these turrets, a couple of loaders spawn. My plan was to disarm one, and slowly fire shots at them to stack critical ascension, giving us some more sniper damage to use on the turrets. And this process was pretty tedious. I had to make sure I waited in between each shot to let him regen as much health as possible, but also not wait too long so that I started losing my stacks. Two Fang, aka our multi-shot enchantment, would proc as well. This is not good for stacking because it deals extra damage to the loader but doesn't give us an extra stack of critical ascension. I also couldn't unspec into it because I needed two fang for that extra DPS on the turrets. Ammo was also an issue. In order to have enough ammo to continue stacking, I would have to jump off this cliff to get the free ammo from respawning. I would lose about 10 stacks in this process and the whole thing was just a constant tug of war. Eventually I got 35 stacks and went after the first turret and just barely got away with the kill. And for the second one, I accidentally killed off my stacking loader, so that sucked. I didn't want to have to reset the map and fight both turrets again, but I noticed that this turret was level 89, which is the lowest possible level it could spawn at. So I tried to brute force it. For this to work, we were going to need Two Fang to proc more times than not. We were also going to have to utilize all four of our longbows. We could not waste any time reloading, so instead we decided to swap to our other three fully charged crossbows to have a chance at killing this cursed turret. And after like 10 attempts, we managed to pull it off. Oh my fucking god, dude. This game's stupid. Well, that only took 120 shots to handle. Let's see how many this giant toaster takes. Oh, like 15 maybe? That's cool and makes sense. And the last thing we need to do before the bunker fight was face McShooty. Oh. So we made it to the bunker and our objective was to blow up 11 giant turrets. 
And if the tiny ones went bad, you can only imagine that the big ones would be worse, right? Nope, they have a crit spot conveniently placed on the back of them. After that, it was time to fight the bunker, aka the greatest defense spot ever built. If some tiny turret ate up all of our ammo, I can only imagine that this fight was going to be impossible. Oh yeah. All right, for the Minecraft players wondering what the heck just happened, this boss has multiple hurt boxes that overlap on each other. So if you know where to shoot this guy, Bor just lets the bullet get stuck bouncing back and forth and practically one-shotting this boss. It leaves it at one health since it has to die in this spot, so I decided to finish him off with style. Let's go. It was now time to jump down into Angel Core and deal with multiple waves of loaders. This should be fine though, right guys? Sure, the laser turrets have aimbot and no crit spot, but there will be plenty of loaders to stack critical ascension on. Everything's gonna be fine. Howdy boys. Ah, f the Enderman is back. Hold on. Anyway, a fight that should take five minutes maybe took about half an hour. And then the last injector we had to destroy glitched out and just became invincible. Still not sure what caused this, but it has to be something to do with the other injectors respawning after 25 minutes or just taking too long in general. We got lucky and our kunai managed to take it out for some reason. I don't know, spaghetti coat or something. I'm just glad we didn't have to redo this whole fight. Anyway, Roland died, the Enderman got kidnapped, and now we had to go to Sawtooth's Cauldron. Here we had to take out four more shielded nomad dudes, and honestly, I was just kind of getting farmed by these guys. I was just constantly surrounded, and if you mix that with how squishy I was, you get an experience similar to falling into a mob grinder. We eventually got enough sneaky headshots and destroyed Boombringer so that Mortar would come down and fight us. The last thing we needed to do was fight a few ghasts, but this blaster goliath was causing chaos up here. I decided to knock his helmet off so he would enter rage mode, but then my guy just started trying to punch the buzzards and just fell off the tower. That didn't matter though because homie just set his game mode to creative and flew his way back up here. Honestly, I don't even want to talk about killing the buzzards anymore. Just know that I did. I was way too invested in this guy's journey. He was launching other bad guys around and I wanted to see what happened. But tragically, he ran off too far before I had a chance to put a name tag on him. So he despawned. We'll miss you, Blaster Goliath. Anyway, we used the bombs we stole to get to the boneyard and spun a bunch of valves before crashing our car into a pipe and Tony Hawking the thing. We made it to the Badlands after that with the goal of sneaking in, getting the data we needed, and getting out. And if you thought I was going to fight Saturn, the giant, tanky, fire-resistant, no-crit-spot-having, scary robot of death, pfft, yeah, right. This guy is optional. Maybe when Skags fly. What the? Oh, come on, dude. So the plan to kill Saturn was to use his little turret attachments to rack up boar damage. These turrets have separate health bars and have health regen while Saturn doesn't. So after hitting one of these turrets, I would let them regen a little bit before continuing to use them against Saturn. After one heartbreaking fail, we managed to get the kill, sneak in, steal the data, and make it out. Were you expecting me to stay alive? Well, that's your own fault. We were finally ready for the final stride towards the vault. Combat at the claptrap door was going to be pretty scary because super surveyors spawn. Normal surveyors are an issue because they don't have crit spots, and now imagine one that's five times tankier. The plan for these guys was to lure them into a trap by wounding other loaders and hoping we could slag them with kunai, and just brute force it. Or you know, it could just fly too close to another surveyor and just get bored. We managed to stack a good amount of critical ascension during this big fight and that helped us finish it relatively well. After that, we did the parkour map known as Heroes Pass and made it to our fight with Jack. The first phase of this fight isn't anything too special, but when Jack's shield breaks, two things happen that could cause some issues. First off, he's got some crazy health regen. And second, he spawns another one of those darn surveyors that gives him an invincibility shield. After five attempts, I managed to accidentally boar kill the drone and then Jack just glitched out, letting me finish him off pretty much for free. And just like that, it was now time for our final fight with the warrior. So this fight would be pretty tough if we did it the intended way. The warrior has multiple slam attacks that are pretty much undodgeable. And our only realistic revives were phantoms and healing was out of the question because the slams were just way too frequent. My f***ing 
yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm literally getting comboed in the air. I'm getting juggled. Now we could use one of the 64 different safe spots next to a respawning ammo crate on this map and just take him out the boring way. Or we could do something funnier and trick the warrior into stepping on a Lego and taking him out the boring way. As the warrior sat there with one HP left to spare, we set ourselves up and ended this run. And just like that, now we know. You can beat Borderlands 2 with only the longbow. Bonus content time, woo! All right, so we might have beat the game, but we didn't find a single diamond the whole run. So we headed towards Caustic Caverns to go mine some. We made it to diamond level and were ambushed by a horde of creepers, but we weren't going to let them stop us from finding what we came for. A trophy to commemorate this run and some diamonds. Why are they purple? Before you go, I just wanted to say thank you so much for making it this far into the video. If you want to support the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Doing all that helps with YouTube's algorithm a lot. I also read all my comments and love hearing your guys' kind words and ideas for new runs. If you want to support the channel more directly, consider becoming a channel member to get videos a day early, using my link and saving yourself money on instant gaming, or checking out the merch store. I will link my Discord and Twitch channel where I stream these runs live in the description, but until next time, breathe easy homies.